You might recall a strong acid is an acid that ionizes completely in water. It is a strong electrolyte. Example, H10O3, that's a strong acid, ionizes into nitrate and hydronium ion. When we say it's a strong one, it completely ionizes. We're saying there's no H10O3 left. It breaks up 100% into ions. HCl, once again, a strong acid. What we mean by that is there is no HCl left. It ionizes 100% into ions. There's no amount of acid left. It all ionizes. A weak acid is an acid that only partially ionizes in water. It is a weak electrolyte. So say HCN, hydrogen cyanide, which is a weak acid. We're saying that the bulk of it does not ionize. It says as a whole, and about less than 5% will actually break up into ions. So you have far less hydronium formed as compared to a strong acid of the same concentration. If I had a 0.1 molarity solution of HCN and a 0.1 solution of HCl, I'm going to have far greater amount of hydronium in the HCl than I will in the HCN. Strong base is a base that is present entirely as ions, one of which is hydroxide. It is a strong electrolyte. So sodium hydroxide, we break up into sodium hydroxide. Same thing here, a strong one basically means there's no sodium hydroxide. Breaks up 100% into its ions. Weak base is a base that is only partially ionized in water. It is a weak electrolyte. So say something like ammonia, we're saying that that breaks up far less than a strong acid, less than 5% in ionizes. The bulk stays as a whole in H3. So once again, I'm going to have far less hydroxide formed as compared to the strong base at the same concentration. So if I had a 0.1 molarity solution of sodium hydroxide versus a 0.1 molarity solution of ammonia, I'm going to have far greater amount of hydroxide in that sodium hydroxide than I will in the ammonia solution. Now, it's fairly easy to know the, your strong acids and your weak acids because everything's starting with hydrogen, so you know, learn your six strong ones and everything else is weak. But the weak base is a little bit more difficult. Okay? You know your strong ones, so what, what are the weak bases? Your weak bases are your ammonia compounds, your uh, ammonia derivatives, NH minus NH, um, compounds and some other anions, as well as some other cations that are acidic. So we need to figure out how do we determine these? How do we determine the anions and the cations that are basic and, and acidic? Salts may be acidic, basic, or neutral, and are composed of cations, positive ions, and anions, or negative ions. So if you take a salt that has a cation and anion, we have to look at the cation and anion individually to determine what's going on, determine if it has any acidic or basicity adding to the actual salt. So a cation can be either acidic or neutral. An anion is either basic or neutral. Cations of your strong bases, if you know your strong bases, the cations of those strong bases are neutral. Otherwise, your cation contributes to acidity. For your anion, the anions of your monoprotic strong acids are neutral. Otherwise, the anion contributes basicity. Put this in a nutshell, sodium ion, potassium, lithium, calcium, strontium, and barium are all neutral. Any other cation contributes acidity to the salt. Cl minus, Br minus, I minus, NO3 minus, ClO4 minus are all neutral. The rest of your anions are basic to the salt, add basicity to the salt. So you learn which cations and anions are neutral, and the rest of the cations are acidic, and the rest of the anions are basic. To predict the acidity and basicity of a salt, you must examine the acidity and basicity of the ions composing the salt. Depending on the two components, yes, your cation and your anion, the overall salt will be acidic, basic, or neutral. If I have a neutral cation 
in a neutral anion, well, obviously everything's neutral, I'm going to have a neutral salt. If I have an acidic cation and a neutral anion, then the overall salt will be acidic. If I have a neutral cation and a basic anion, then the overall result will be a basic salt. If I have an acidic cation and a basic anion, well, what's going to dictate it, it depends on the larger Ka or Kb, which is the ionization constant. Which one's ionizing more? Am I forming more hydronium or more hydroxide? The one with the more will be the case of what it's going to be, acidic or basic salt. Let's look at an example, ammonia chloride. We need to think about the cation and the anion. If we look at the cation, NH4+, plus, is that one of the ones we memorized as neutral? The answer is no. So therefore, it's adding some acidity to this salt. Is Cl- minus one of those anions that we memorized as neutral? The answer is yes. So therefore, it's adding neutral. So I have acidity coming from the cation, neutral from the anion. Therefore, the overall salt is an acidic salt. Therefore, we expect the pH to be less than 7. Sodium cyanide. Breaks up, I got sodium ions and cyanide ions. It's sodium plus one of those cations that we memorize as neutral. The answer is yes. Is cyanide one of those anions that we memorized as being neutral? The answer is no. Therefore, it's adding bas basicity to the salt. So I have a neutral cation, a basic anion. The overall salt is basic. Therefore, the pH we expect to be greater than 7. Potassium acetate. We have potassium ions and acetate ions. Is potassium one of those neutral species we memorized as the, as the cations? The answer is yes. Is acetate one of those neutral anions we memorized? The answer is no. So I have a neutral cation, a basic anion, the overall salt we expect to be basic, pH graded in 7. Let's look at some examples. Aluminum chloride, do we ex what do we expect this to be? Acidic, basic, or neutral salt? Is aluminum one of those species we memorized as neutral for a cation? The answer is no, so it's adding acidity. Is chloride one of those anions we memorized as neutral? The answer is yes, therefore it's adding neutral. Since I have acidic cation and a neutral anion, the overall salt is acidic. Is zinc one of those cations we memorized as neutral? Answer is no, so we're adding some acidity. Is nitrate one of those anions we memorized as neutral? The answer is yes. So I have an acidic cation, a neutral anion. Overall, it's an acidic salt. Is potassium one of those? Yes, it is. It's neutral. Perchloric, is that one of the ones we memorized as neutral? The answer is yes. I got a neutral cation and a neutral anion. Therefore, the overall salt is neutral. Is sodium one of those cations we memorized? The answer is yes, so it's neutral. Is phosphate one of the anions we memorized as neutral? The answer is no, therefore it's adding basicity. So I have a neutral cation and a basic anion, that means the overall salt is basic. Is lithium one of those cations we memorized as neutral? The answer is yes, so it's neutral for the cation. Is fluoride one of those ones we memorized as neutral? The answer is no, therefore it's adding basicity. Therefore, the overall salt will be basic. Is ammonia one of those ions we memorized as uh, neutral? The answer is no, so it's adding acidity. Is fluoride one of those ones we memorized as neutral? The answer is no. So we have acidic and basic components. So how are we going to dictate if, it, if it's an acid or a base? Well, you got to look at the Ka and Kb. In this case, K, Kb. I mean, excuse me, Ka is larger than Kb, 10 to the 10th is larger than 10 to the minus, therefore it's going to have more acidic properties, more hydroniums form, so therefore it's acidic. We already stated ammonia is an acidic cation. What about ClO, hypochlorous ion? Answer so there is that yes, no, no, it's not one of those neutral ones, so therefore we've got acidic and basic again. So we're going to look at Ka, Kb. Kb is 10 to the minus 7, while Ka is 10 to the minus 10. 10 to the minus 7 is larger, therefore have more basic salt available, more hydroxide. Therefore, it's going to be a basic salt. 
Monier again, it's going to be acidic. Acetate is not one we memorize, so it's basic. So once again, we've got acidic and basic. But if you look at the Ka and Kb, they're exactly the same. Therefore, i got as much hydronium as I have hydroxide. So it's still a neutral salt in this particular example. One of the chemical properties of acids and bases is that they neutralize one another. A neutralization reaction is a reaction of an acid and base that results in ionic compound in water. The ionic compound is the product of a neutralization reaction. The ionic compound that is the product of a neutralization reaction is called a salt. Look at this example, HCM, which is an acid, and KOH, which is a base. It forms the products of salt plus water. And the question comes up, what kind of salt is that? Is it a neutral salt? Is it an acidic salt? Is it a basic salt? Well, now that we had the previous information, we should be able to determine that. Potassium, is that one of those species we memorized as a neutral cation? The answer is yes. Is cyanide one of those neutral species we memorized as an anion? The answer is no. So this is a basic salt. Based on the cation being neutral and the anion being basic, this is a basic salt. During a neutralization reaction, an acid and a base are mixed together to make a solution. The resulting solution will contain the salt and water. One of the chemical properties of acids and bases is that they neutralize one another. Okay, so your acids and base will neutralize it. However, that does not mean that the product will be neutral. That salt may be acidic or basic or neutral. So although acids and bases neutralize themselves, you've got to look at what's being formed to determine if the overall product is a neutral species, acidic species, or a basic species. The misconception is that if an acid and base are in stoichiometry proportions, that the resultant solution is neutral. This is not true. The salt form may be acidic, basic, or neutral salt, and that will dictate the pH of the solution. Common sense can help you predict the pH of a mixture. For example, if I have a strong acid plus a strong base, basically both ionize in the same, okay, 100%, well then those strong strengths should cancel each other out, and I should end up with a neutral salt. In essence, this is the only true neutralization where the pH is equal to 7. If I have a strong acid and a strong base, I will always have a neutral solution totally, pH of 7, neutral salt form. What if I have a weak acid and a strong base? Well, I have an excess of base, excess of hydroxide ions, so then I'm going to end up forming a basic salt. So the original acid and base will neutralize, but the product has some basic properties in the basic pH. What if I have a strong acid and a weak base? This time I have an, I have an excess of hydronium ions, so I'm going to form an acidic salt. Therefore, the original acid and base are neutralized, but the product has acidic properties in acidic pH. So going back to our original example, we could have predicted what was going to happen here just by looking at what's my reactants. I have HCM, which is a weak acid. I have KOH, which is a strong base. Since I have an excess of strong base, that means I have an additional amount, excess amount of hydroxide ions, we expect to form a basic salt as our product. Is that what occurred? Yes, it is. Remember we said potassium is neutral. Cyanide is not one of the neutral anions, so we predicted a basic salt. That agrees with what we said. Let's look at this example, HCl and KOH. We're looking at a strong acid and a strong base. Well, what do you predict the salt to be without even looking at what the product is? Well, since I got a strong acid and a strong base, they're going to neutralize each other. I expect a neutral salt. Let's see if that works. Potassium, is that one of my um, cations that are neutral? Yes. Is chloride one of those anions that is neutral? Yes. So neutral, neutral, I'm going to form a neutral salt. Homework 29 and 30 deals with information about acids and bases.